Well, I'm finally getting around to uh, addressing the cooling system here on my 77C10, and I mentioned in an update video uh, just a little while back that I was going to uh, I was going to address this, and so I uh, finally gotten around to it. Let me show you the current setup that I have. I'll come around here on the side. I have one single 16-inch electric fan. The radiator is a just an, uh, an auto parts store replacement. It's an aluminum core with plastic tanks, it's a two row. And I mentioned in that update video that I was probably gonna get a new radiator. Well, I've decided against that. Um, you know, unless you opt for the really expensive uh, premium radiators like a Griffin or a Ron Davis or a Be Cool, those, I mean, they're $600 and, or, I just I, I can't justify that cost it's 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 a little too much for me and this radiator is working pretty well now with the current setup I have uh, it cools absolutely just fine up to an outside temperature of about 80 degrees once the temperature starts to get above 80 degrees I start having slight overheating issues when I'm stuck in traffic or when I'm in a drive-through anything like that and then as the temperature climbs up you know, here in Dallas, uh, August temperatures can easily be above 100, then uh, it really starts having major cooling issues. Uh, as long as I'm moving, I really don't have any problems. Uh, though when it is 100 plus degrees out here, outside, uh, even moving while the, you know, the truck is in motion, uh, it could still run a little hot. So, uh, I'm gonna address that. I'm going to make a fan shroud. I'm gonna keep my 16 inch aluminum fan, uh, electric fan keep that radiator and just fabricate a fan shroud. Here's the material that I've picked up for this. It's 80 thousandths thick, 5052 aluminum. Uh, I hope I got enough here. The grade of aluminum is not a big issue uh, for this project. It's just a fan shroud. Um, the thickness is kind of important because I'm hanging a fan. I'm hanging some weight off of it. So 80 thousandths should be plenty. Uh, and again, the grade 5052, I mean, this was in the cut pile at my metal store. So, uh, cheaper than, it was cheaper than getting material cut from a full sheet. And 5052 generally welds pretty darn well. So, that's the material, that's the plan. I'm actually gonna pull the whole radiator out so that I, I can set this on the table and uh, build my fan shroud from there. So, gonna get this thing drained and uh, get it pulled out. And uh, then we'll start fabricating. So here's the setup that I'm working with. I got these two pieces of square tubing. This is going to be effectively my uh, sheet metal break. I'm measuring off one inch of the aluminum sticking out. I'm going to clamp all this into place. So I actually used to have a sheet metal break. It was just a Harbor Freight one, but it actually worked all right. Problem is, it was kind of big and it was kind of heavy, and I Honestly, I just ran out of space to store it, so I posted it up on Craigslist. Come in real handy right about now, but this will work just as well. 
So, get that all snug down. And we're just gonna smack this little flange area down into a, a 90 degree angle. So the hammer marks are kind of unsightly, but most of them should be covered uh, by the tank on the side there. The tank should, the tank is about three quarters of an inch high. This is one inch. So most of these hammer marks should be covered, but uh, just working with the materials that I got on hand. So uh, let's bend up the other side. We are pretty darn good. So real happy with that. And like I said, those hammer marks that you could see earlier are pretty unsightly. But if you look at the tank, the tank covers most of those hammer marks. You can still see a few if I lift it up. And you can really see those hammer marks. But set down like that, you really can't see them. So next thing I'm going to do is put the uh, electric fan on there and uh, mark out where that needs to go. Cut that. And uh, then we'll cut the little uh, flanges we have for the bottom and the top to mate it up. Uh, attach it to the radiator itself. All right. Oh yeah. That's a good scratch. Let me look in the viewfinder. Oh yeah, you guys can totally see that. So, that's a rough outline. I'll probably sharpie that in and make it a little bit of a better circle, but I can easily see that line uh, for cutting. So, uh, let's just move on. I'm going to double check that everything clears like I need it to. So we'll put the radiator in there, put the shroud in there. I'm going to set my fan, just kind of hold my fan in place. It's pretty well over the scratch mark I made. So I've got quite, I've, I've got clearance here. I've got a considerable amount. This is my water pump pulley right here. There is at least an inch and a half, if not an inch and three quarter, inch and seven eighths of clearance between uh, the bolts on the water pump pulley and the plastic uh, shroud of the electric fan. So our clearances are good here, so we're ready to move on. So all I'm doing right now is I'm getting the shroud centered up on the radiator core itself. And there's a little bit extra material on these uh, pieces of one by one angle iron. And with everything kind of squared up, looks like I need to cut 3 eighths of an inch off of one of these legs. It doesn't really matter you know, which one, but only one side needs about 3 eighths of an inch removed from it. And that'll make it flush with this surface right there. So I'm gonna make a fence uh, on my uh, Swag Off-Road uh, port band stand, and then we're gonna cut 3 eighths of an inch off of uh, both top and bottom uh, mounts there, both flange pieces. So uh, let me get set up and we'll make those cuts. just one little thing that I wanted to point out here I don't really have enough space between the side of the blade and the side of the portaband saw so what I'm having to do is cut a little bit and you can see as I actually get right up here to the body of the saw you can see it actually pinch in that cut that I made so that's why I'm having to cut whatever that is about four or five inches pull it out saw it off in that manner which leaves me with a bunch of pieces like that so I just gotta make a long cut 
cut off the little piece and then make another long cut. So it's just a slow process, but it's doing a really good job. It's a really nice straight cut. So I'll just keep going. This is the last piece that I actually have to cut and uh, then we'll be ready to actually start setting it, uh, setting everything up for welding. So one last little test fit of everything. Last little bit of fit up. Check and make sure everything's still good. Uh, one thing I just did off camera is I uh, took 45 degrees, just a little notch out of the edge, edge of these uh, flange pieces just because you can see that uh, little tab on the core doesn't go all the way to the tank. So just to clean it up a little bit, uh, knock that corner off. But other than that, we're pretty much ready for welding. So we'll get all this set up on the welding table and uh, start jigging it up and then uh, lay some beads. Try and stack some aluminum dimes, but uh, we'll definitely lay some beads. So let me get set up for that and I'll bring you back. So I got it all jigged up to weld uh, this one side, which I guess would be the top, I'm sorry, the bottom, because the fan would be uh, towards the uh, driver's side of the truck. So this would be the bottom. So everything's looking pretty good. Gave it one last wipe down with uh, some rubbing alcohol. This little gap right here, I'm probably just going to push that. When I tack it in place, I'm just going to push it with, probably not my fingers, I'll use something else but push that up, but all the other gaps are good. I left the little corners of that angle iron in place because they're, it's nice to use that as your filler material to burn in that corner when you're making a tack weld. So I left that little nub sticking up right there even though it's a radius edge. So this is all set up, ready to go. I'm gonna wipe it down once again because I've been touching it with my grubby fingers. Uh, but let me get my chair and uh, we'll fire up the welder and lay some beads.
Both sides are welded. I have one good stretch right there. I was just in the groove on that one, but the rest of them are good. I'm not going to grind them off or uh, uh, smooth them out or anything like that. I did have one little hiccup right there where I dipped my tungsten. So you saw I had to, you know, I flipped the tungsten around and uh, just motored on. So we'll let this cool down. I'm going to go grab some lunch and then we'll come back. And next thing we got to do is actually cut out a big hole right here for the electric fan. Mm -hmm. 